Hi everyone, this is Charlene de la Cruz and I am part of the team work and we will be tackling what is international trade is and as we go forward, I will just discussing a brief history or introduction on what is international trade. And as we all know, international trade is the exchange of goods and services between two countries. And this trading globally gives the opportunity on some countries to have the goods and services that is not available on their own countries or more expensive domestically. And these two political economists named Mr. Adam Smith and Mr. David Ricardo is the one who introduced what is the importance of international trade. And as of now, we are still hearing some argue that this international trade can be bad or giving the greater risk on a smaller nation uh, while competing or giving trading on the world. And how can we understand what this international trade is? And this is a key wherein we can rise a certain global economy and in that global economy supply and demand and thus price are both impacted for some global events and for your reference we can also check this two textbook that we found about international trade this one textbook is about miss sarita de jackson she is the author um this is name international trade and services effective practice and policy and this textbook it covers um, different information about what this international and the book provides a simple yet thorough introduction on how to export a service to an overseas market and the book will guide its audience with a step-by-step -step process on exporting a service from research to strategy to implementation and for the second textbook that you can check or get a reference for international trade, this name is International Trade Theory and Policy with Contributions by Federico Fetti. This is a second edition already that is published with Giancarlo Gandolfo. On this textbook, this is published last 2013. The preview of this textbook is this is a comprehensive and up-to-date textbook ideal for both undergraduate and graduate trade courses. This new edition includes the latest on globalization, economic, geography, as well as trade integration and wage inequality. This two textbook can give you a whole information, a different um, characteristic of what this international trade is. And you can learn a lot on these two textbooks. So, I really am um, hoping that you can able to um, just read one of this. And this is highly appreciated by us. Thank you very much. And as we all know, there's uh, some basis of what is international trade. And this is already lies in the diversity of economic resources in different countries. These differences provide a country an opportunity to specialize in the production of some specific commodities, such as specialization is facilitated by the exchange of surplus production through international trade. And thank you very much for listening on this part on where and we just give some recap or introduction on what is international trade. And I hope this two textbook that I give to you uh, will be a great help in order for you to get some references on what this international trade is. And as we go forward, um, some of the part of international trade and to get better learners, um, will be discuss the history with Ms. Eliza Ordonez. For the theory of international trade will be discussed by Ms. Gary Espendor. For the types of international trade will be discussed by Ms. Eliza Madampayan. And for the reason why is international trade exists will be introduced or discussed by Ms. Shaila May Cruz. And for the benefits and importance of international trade will be discussed by Ms. Precious Carey. So I hope you get some breakup or some hint on what is international trade. And we go forward to history by Ms. Eliza Ordonez. We will discuss a brief history of international trade. The origins of international trade may be traced back to ancient times 
when people first began traveling long distances to exchange goods. The history of international trade began with barter system which was replaced by mercantilism and then um, shift towards rebellion. Barter system is the act of trading goods or services between two or more parties without the use of money. Bartering is defined as trading one good or service in exchange for another one good or service. Mercantilism is an economic theory that advocates for government regulation of international trade to generate wealth and national power. Merchants and the government work together to reduce the trade deficit and achieve surplus. And rebellion is the removal or reduction of restrictions or barriers to the free exchange of goods between nations, tariff barriers such as treaties and surcharges, as well as non-tariff barriers such as licensing rules and quotas. In the beginning of 19th century saw a shift towards professionalism which faded by the end of the century and around 1913 the countries of the West saw a significant shift toward economic liberty with restriction removed and custom duties reduced across barriers. Establishing business anywhere and finding employment was easy. Trade was really free between countries in this um, century. It's trade transport. So historians believe that the first long distance trade happened between Mesopotamia and the Indus Valley in Pakistan. Next, what they do or use to trade is by canal which helped to encourage land-based trade routes and due to a lack of proper roads, they transport goods by sea. Moving on to the developments in trade, first, because of the invention of money, it made trade simpler. Second, in 1946, GATT or General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade was established and it aims to increase trade by tariff reduction. The later WTO or World Trade Organization was established in 1995. This organization deals with the rules of trade between nations. And international trade has flourished as transportation costs have decreased and the telecommunication have improved. Next, we have the international trade theory. International trade is the exchange of goods and services across international borders. Over the past couple of hundred years, we have developed more regulations to protect domestic traders and the trade itself. We have worked on business models that teach businesses how to use their resources as efficient as possible. The work done on international trade since the 18th century has been with the same goal. International trade theory is dominated by how a country can efficiently use its natural resources. Should a country try to end its reliance on imports? What kind of products can be imported? And how can the exports be boosted? We should know why international trade theory is important. International trade theories explain and facilitate international trade to happen. A wrong mindset or an ill-advised view on international trade can severely affect a country's long-term financial stability. We have different kinds of theories. First, we have the mercantilism. So mercantilism developed in the 16th century. Mercantilism was one of these earliest efforts to develop an economic theory, and this theory stated that a country's wealth was determined by the amount of its gold and silver holdings. Mercantilists believe that a country should increase its holdings of gold and silver by promoting exports, discouraging imports. In other words, if people in other countries buy more from you, and it could be export, then they sell to you imports, then they have to pay you from difference in gold and silver. The objective of each country was to have a trade surplus, 
or a situation where the value of exports are greater than the value of imports, and to avoid a trade deficit, or a situation where the value of imports is greater than the value of exports. Next, we have the absolute advantage. In 776, Adam Smith questioned the leading mercantile theory of the time in the world of nations, an inquiry into the nature and causes of the world of nations. Recent versions have been edited by scholars and economists, and Smith offered a new trade theory called absolute advantage, which focused on the ability of a country to produce a good more efficiently than another nation. Smith reasoned that the trade between countries shouldn't be regulated or restricted by government policy or intervention. He stated that trade should flow naturally according to market forces. Next, we have the comparative advantage. Comparative advantage is the challenge to the absolute advantage theory was that some countries may be better at producing both goods and therefore have an advantage in many areas. In contrast, Another country may not have any useful absolute advantages. To answer this challenge, David Ricardo, an English economist, introduced the theory of comparative advantage in 1817. Nevertheless, they remain relatively new and minimally tested theories. Now, let's talk about the types of international trade. There are three types of international trade. We have the export trade, the import trade, and the entrepreneur trade. Import and export trades are explained as the goods and services manufactured in one country and acquired by citizens of another country. The import and export of good or service can be anything. This trade can be done through shipping, email, transmitted in a private luggage on plane. Basically, if the product is manufactured domestically and traded in a foreign country, it is known as import and export. So we have an example. For example, Philippines' major exports are what? Electronic products, which is 42%. Other manufacturers is 10%. Woodcrafts and furniture, 6%. Philippines is also the world's largest producer of coconut, pineapple, and abaca. Philippines' main export partner, so we have the country of Japan, which is the 21%, the number one we have. The United States is 15%, so we have the China is 12%, and Hong Kong. Usually, they import and export technologies, goods, services, products that we have, as well as this country imports as different goods, products, merchandise to us. Now, what is entrepot trade? It refers to a trade in one center for our good for another countries. Merchandising can be imported and exported, okay, without paying an import duties or export duties. So, entrepot trade. Because of favorable trade conditions, profit is possible in entrepot trade. So, for example, we have sheep hesitating to travel an entire length of a long trading route can sell it to an entrepot. The entrepot sells this good as a higher price to ships traveling in the other segment of other group of ships. In that case, buyers will have their designated products. So that's all the types of international trade that we have to talk about. Thank you. Hi, good day. My name is Shaila Marcus and I'm here to discuss the seven reasons for international trade. The first one is reduce dependence on your local market, which means your home market may be struggling due to economic pressures. But if you go global, you will have immediate access to a practically unlimited range of customers in areas where there is more money available to spend. And because different cultures have different wants and needs, you can diversify your product range to take advantage of these differences. Then, the second one is increased chances of success, which means unless you've got wrong your pricing, the higher the volume of your products you sell, the more profit you make. And overseas trade is an obvious way to increase sales. In support of this, you can trade, trade it rather, and investment claims that companies who go global are 12% more likely to survive and excel than those who choose not to export. Then, the third one is the increased efficiency. Benefit from the economies of skills that the export of your goods can bring, go global and profitable, use of any access capacity in your business, smoothing the load and avoiding the seasonal fix, and true that 
are the vein of the production's manager's life. Then the fourth one is the increased productivity. Statistics from the UK Trade and Investment state that companies involved in overseas trade can improve their productivity by 34%. Imagine that. Over a third more or with no increase in. Then the fifth one is the economic advantage. Take advantage of currency fluctuation, expert when the value of the pound sterling is low against other currency, and reap the very real benefits. Words of warning though, watch out for import profits. It's the country you are exporting to, and keep an eye on the value of sterling. You don't want to be caught out by any sudden upsurge in the value of the pound, or you could lose all the profit you have worked so hard to gain. Then the sixth one is the innovation because you are exporting to a wider range of customers you will also gain a wider range of feedback about your products and this can lead to real benefits in fact UK TI statistics shows that business believe that exporting leads to innovation, increase in breakthrough product development to solve problems and meet the needs of the wider customer base. 53% of businesses they spoke decided that new products or service has ended evolve because of their overseas trade then the last one the seventh one is the growth uh, which means the holy grail for any business and something that has been lacking for a long time in our manufacturing industries where overseas trade increased growth opportunities to benefit both of your business and our economy as a whole then that's all for this video thank you for watching hope you understand something for me thank you bye Good day, I'm Precious Ivy Tigarin, the last reporter of this group presentation. My topic is the benefits of international trade. We have five international trade benefits. First, job opportunities are wide open. Second, expanding markets and increasing income. Third, make a good relationship between countries. Fourth, increasing the prosperity of a country. And five, the needs of life of easier to fulfill. Job opportunities are wide open. The first benefit of international trade is opening a very wide job opportunities. This is because international trade helps to generate more jobs through development of new industries to meet the product demand in the various countries. This condition will certainly help countries to reduce the unemployment rate. That's why for someone who has not got a job, it will be easier to get a job. Expanding markets and increasing income. The next benefits of international trade is to increase the market for the company. This is done by producing optimally without fear of production and falling selling prices with the existence of international trade. Entrepreneurs can be run their production machines to the maximum and to sell the excess products produced abroad. That's why the high productivity will increase income. Make good relationship between countries. Another benefit of that can be felt from international trade is establishment a good relationship between countries. The participating of countries will certainly establish the good relations. After that, other cooperation can be also carried out by country. Fourth, increasing prosperity of a country. International trade has also an important role of increasing each country concerned. This is because Countries with advantages and disadvantages, an item can sell and obtain the goods they need. The existence of international trade activities 
will make needs meet and increase income. That's why an increase in state income will increase the prosperity of country concerned. And the last one, the needs of life are easier to fulfill. And existences of international trade will also make it easier for each country to meet their needs that are not produced by that country. This is because each country must have own wealth of resources, starting from geographical condition, climate, the level of science, and technology mastery. And also the fourth, this can later be developed by producing each country. Thank you and God bless!